Good morning, everyone. We are at our Airbnb in LA. We are desperately trying to find a place to live. And today's my seven year anniversary with John. So figured I'd do a little vlog and take you along for the ride. Check out how cute this street is. Last night around like 9 p.m., John saw two coyotes just like sauntering up the street, chilling like they own the place. I realized that I really only vlog when I'm doing cool things like going to music festivals or on vacation somewhere. So even though we're at an Airbnb right now, I just kind of wanted to do a more like day in the life style video. So let's go make a mud water latte. <laughs> about me you can always count on is my shirts will be covered in dog hair at all times. And on that note, let's go say hi to Sumper. How's it going, goofball? Happy Wednesday. Oh, big dog stretch. Oh, it's a big dog stretch. I love you. <laughs> Come here, do you want to go for a walk? Do you want to go for a walk? Yes, you do, my little dancing camel. You want to go for a walk? Yeah, you do. <laughs> Have a good walk. He's so cute. Oh my god, I can't. His floppy little ears. Mud water, it's really good. Okay, so if you don't follow me on Instagram, you don't know the fiasco that just happened with our dog sitter. So John and I went to Outside Lands the other weekend. We just popped in to see Phoebe Bridgers and we had our regular dog walker um, stay the night for Thumper. And there have been some red flags. Like there were times where we would ask her to walk him at a really good pace so he could get some exercise. And we could just see her out of the window walking like a snail's pace. And so she didn't really listen to us, but she generally always showed up and that's what matters to us most. So we had her dog sit for Thumper while we went to Outside Lands and we stayed the night in San Francisco. And first of all, we get home. I saw that she left the wrong house key for us. So texted her that she had to come back and drop off the right key. Then I went upstairs. I saw that she spilled food all over our bedroom carpet and like barely bothered to clean it up. Luckily, I was able to get the stain out because it's John's parents' house. It's not my carpet. So thank God it came out. Then I checked Thumper's activity tracker because he wears this thing on his collar that's a whistle and it basically tracks like how much he licks, scratches, eats, drinks water, sleeps, how much exercise he gets. I can see uh, on a map at all times where he is. And basically we got it because where we live up north in the country, he's escaped before. When he escapes into the wild, it is like all hell breaks loose. So we just have him wear this tracker. And when I checked his tracker, it showed that the dog walker never walked him and he never left the property, which is like, you have one job basically. And I asked her about it and she completely lied to me. And she said she'd walked him for 30 minutes and like got him out. Unbelievable. Cause I could see on the activity tracker that he hadn't gotten out. So I texted her back and I said something like, hmm, that's really interesting because Thumper wears a tracker and we can see that he didn't get any exercise and he didn't leave the property. She didn't respond for 24 hours. And then finally, 24 hours later, she texts me and she's like, I'm so sorry. You're right, I didn't walk him. I'm angry at myself. I mismanaged my time because I was cleaning up, which is crazy because she A, did not clean up. There was like a huge stain on the carpet. And B, we didn't even get home until 3 p.m. So it's like, what the fuck were you doing all day until 3 p.m. that you couldn't walk my dog? And then she has the balls to say, like, I really hope you continue using my service. I will comp your next walk. I'm just like, girl, what planet are you on? I don't want a free walk. like. You should refund me for the fact that you didn't do your job. And this is not some teenage girl. She's older than I am. So she's probably like late thirties. And I put up this poll on Instagram, like, would you guys trust her again? And I think like 80% of people were like, uh-uh, she's gotta go. So definitely not gonna be using her again. It was really disappointing. Cause it's like, I can forgive mistakes always. I could forgive someone for mismanaging time, but what I can't forgive is lying. Like how could you just lie through your teeth? Because when it comes to the care of like your pet or your child, lying is just so not cool because if they're lying about this one thing, what else are they lying about? You know, it was just too much. It's like Thumper deserves better than that. You know, he's our whole world and we really just want someone who's going to care for him properly, but it's so hard to find a dog sitter in the Bay Area who can handle him because he's so big and he gets really aggressive with dogs. Just grinds my gears. Enough of that boring story.
summer rain on the window. Watch this time float on. So remember how I told you it was my seven year anniversary with John? I was gonna take you along for the ride. Yeah, that was a week ago and we still haven't celebrated our anniversary. I ended up getting a gnarly stomach bug. So we've been here now for a week and a half in LA and I've just like been crushed with work, crushed with this weird stomach bug. I have no idea what's been going on. But anyways, the show must go on. So I'm gonna take you along for a what I eat in the day. I've never had so many moving pieces at once. We are entirely stretched too thin. So unfortunately I'm not out doing all the fun LA things I wanted to vlog, but this might be a better way for you to get to know me and see what my life is really like I pretty much just stay home 24 7 and cook and work and that's it so I'm gonna make a typical dinner for you one that I make at least twice a week and then tomorrow I'll show you my breakfast and more of my daytime routine this is pretty much what I do a hundred times a day since I work from home I just get to come out and take little breaks with my thumper dog because he's my best friend in the whole world yes you are who's that oh buddy who's that Oh, here we go. Best oh, friends. Big dog. Oh, oh belly, rub. belly rub. Oh, time for belly rub. Belly rub. Yeah, I'm oh. filming you. You camera shy, buddy? Whee! <laughs> Look at these cute butts. Look at these cute little butts. These cute butts. We are taking ourselves for a little walk. Our Airbnb is in Eagle Rock, so we've had a really nice time getting to know the neighborhood. It's so beautiful. There's a really great community here. It's so quiet and peaceful. Definitely a great place to stay if you're looking for a spot in LA that's on the east side that's a little bit more removed and a little bit more peaceful than central LA, but still is pretty accessible to like downtown, Silver Lake, stuff like that. Okay, I just saw a girl wearing low rise jeans. It's happening, guys. It's happening. Look at that little adventure dog. That's an adventure pup. We didn't even want to take him down these big streets, but he said, I want to be a city dog today. John's running errands right now, so figured I'd do a little life update. But first, bought a couple products from this brand called oh, <laughs> London Town. It's their uh, nail perfecting, nope. Perfecting Nail Veil and their Illuminating Nail Concealer. I posted about these on Instagram and people went like wild saying they were some of the best nail products they'd ever tried. So very excited about these. But anyways, I have three doctor's appointments over the next week and a half. No, four doctor's appointments over the next week and a half. Three of them are uh, EDS specialists. So I'm hoping I can finally get a diagnosis. You know, if you're new here, I'm 32, almost 33 and I know that I've been sick and had chronic pain my whole life, spent my whole life searching for answers. And then especially in the past year and a half, two years, we really feel 95% confident that it's hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Like I just check all the boxes. But in the Bay Area, we haven't been able to find a single provider who can diagnose me. Like I, I went through the entire Stanford network because Stanford is my provider in the Bay Area and like none of them could diagnose hypermobile EDS. They could only diagnose the vascular kind. <sighs> so I've just been looking for someone for ages and just feeling like I'm stuck in this zone of like feeling like I know what it is, but not really knowing and really desperately needing a treatment plan. So since we're gonna be moving back down to LA, I figured it would be great to kind of shop around, meet some doctors, find one that'll be my long-term provider and hopefully get a diagnosis and a treatment plan. And there's a lot of different feelings. You know, there's fear, grief and relief, you know, relief to finally have some answers after years and years of being sick and just being in severe pain every day. Grief of, you know, potentially having to go through the grieving process of accepting a lifelong illness that's progressive and incurable, but also gratitude that it's not the fatal kind because there is a kind of EDS that can be really life-threatening. And then there's fear of just like the unknown and how bad is it gonna get? You know, it seems to kind of get worse every year. And the way EDS works is that like one year you have a laundry list of symptoms and the next year your symptoms are completely different. So now I'm having all this elbow pain. I'm having severe TMJ where I just get shooting pains up and down my head. And I've always had TMJ, but now it's like severe pain in addition to my regular chronic pain, which is in my SI. And of course it comes along with the laundry list of things like 
um, seasonal allergies, which is probably mast cell activation syndrome, random fainting and heart palpitations, which is probably POTS, GI issues, insomnia, anxiety. And one of the ways they test for it is if you can touch your, your thumb to your arm or your elbows. So if you can do that, you're definitely hypermobile, um, but it's also a sign of hypermobile EDS. So I'm just hoping to get some answers and hopefully find a really good doctor who listens to me and like actually cares for once because every doctor I've found, uh, pretty much none of them know about EDS, even though it's not even a rare condition, but all the doctors I've found just wanna treat one symptom. And I need one doctor that is gonna look at me holistically and tell me, like give me a treatment plan basically because I can't just keep suffering forever. Like I'm just in too much pain and discomfort every single day. I look fine to you, but on the inside, I have a chronic illness. And it's really hard to get people to see that. Like even just walking down the street with John, you know, will take a hill that to him is no problem, but to me it takes such a long time. And then by the time I get to the hill, my knee gives out because my IT band syndrome is activated. <laughs> just going about daily life, having an invisible illness is just so fucking hard sometimes. I also recognize how super privileged it is to be in a position of uh, being somewhat able-bodied, like I can get around and do normal things. And also to be in a position where I'm stressing about how much work I have. Like it's a privileged position to be able to have two jobs. And I'm totally aware of that. However, everything in life is relative, right? What's hard for you may not be hard for me. What's hard for me may not be hard for you. Having lived through a period of financial instability in my life for almost 10 years, I think, barely being able to pay rent, living paycheck to paycheck for such a long time, slowly building a sales and corporate career, you know, giving up my dream to pursue financial stability. Like it just, it, it makes me so obsessed with trying to make more money um, that I just end up stretching myself too thin because I'm so terrified of one day being broke again. Maybe I'll talk about it more in my career video that I'm gonna do, but in 2008, my family lost everything and my family never recovered and shit got really scary. And I don't think it's something I'll ever be able to fully open up about because I was a teenager at the time and it's not really my story to tell, but it made a huge impact on me mentally. My life basically on paper is like pre-2008 or post-2008. In 2008, I was like, Ooh, I don't know if this, I don't know if this Broadway thing is gonna work out for me because I don't think that I have the talent to actually make it. And I don't wanna wake up one day being 40 and realizing I have no career and I can't pay for health insurance. Like I just, I looked at that path and I just couldn't do it. I really have so much respect for people who know that that might happen and they still pursue their dreams. I mean, if you're someone who's done that, all the power to you. Like I have so many friends who are still struggling and are just, giving everything they have to be um, either a musician or an actor or some kind of artist. And I just did not have that self-belief. There's a lot to the story, but this is all a very long-winded way of saying, I'm stretched too thin. And I know that that's a very, very lucky position to be in, but I need to kind of retrain my brain that half of the stuff I'm super stressed about are things that I'm just putting on myself unnecessarily because I desperately am trying to hold on to progress and growth and stability and stuff like that. Anyways, I don't know if that's a conversation that anyone would be interested in, but I'm thinking about including it a little bit in my career, get ready with me. But it's also scary because it's opening myself up to a lot of criticism. You know, the more personal I get, the more criticism I get online. And that's something I'm aware of. So I wanna share my whole story and I love getting really personal, but there are some things that are too personal to talk about. Like there were some hard fucking times. When you're opening up about some of the most traumatic times in your life, there's always gonna be someone who's saying they had it worse. And so I get a little bit nervous about sharing those kinds of personal stories, but I really enjoy talking about them. I've rambled long enough. I think it's time to show you what I make for dinner. Oh, hi, Pepper. Oh, buddy. Still going. You hungry? 
Chef John, what are we doing? I put the spinach in the pot. Wow. I always start my day with Athletic Greens. My dream on YouTube is to one day be sponsored by Athletic Greens because the shit is so expensive. So every morning, first thing in the morning, big ol' scoop of this. We've been working for a few hours and I realized I've been really bad about hydration, so I always add at least two packets of hydrants, no sugar added electrolyte powders to my water bottle. I have this condition where blood pools in my lower body. So sodium is used as a supplement to increase my blood pressure because my brain and my thyroid and my upper body don't get enough blood naturally. Yeah, okay, now let's make a smoothie. So first I just throw in one frozen banana. Gotta do a frozen banana in a smoothie because when it's frozen, it blends into this creamy kind of ice cream texture. Frozen banana is the best pro tip for a smoothie that you will ever have. A lot of frozen berries. I'm gonna add two huge scoops of almond butter. I'm making two like large servings for me and John to just have throughout the day. So you definitely don't need this much almond butter if you're just making it for yourself. Now I'm doing four scoops of my Vital Proteins Collagen Powder. Excuse me, collagen peptides. An essential step is just a shit ton of spinach. Just like as much as you can possibly pack in that thing. Just shove it all in there. Oat milk, non-dairy milk, whatever you like to use. <laughs> So good. So I drink one serving before I work out and then one serving after I work out because I pretty much exercise around like noon or one every single day and this just works for me. Get a little bit of an energy boost before I work out and then I get my protein after too. We just packed up all our stuff in the Airbnb. Our month in LA has come to an end. It was not the trip that we wanted, but it was the trip that we got. <laughs> Although I ended up being sick pretty much the entire time, we barely got to see any friends or see any of the places that we loved. We're still really excited to come back and live in LA again. And I feel like the next trip will be triumphant. Thanks for watching this very lackluster vlog. If you made it this far, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.